Baltic countries fortifying borders with Russia, there is a threat of attack. Estonia will significantly strengthen NATO's eastern border with Russia. Hundreds of reinforced bunkers will be built as part of a new defence line to protect the Baltic states and by extension the entire Western Defence Alliance from Russian attack, according to the Financial Times. To the south, Lithuania is opening more than a dozen so-called anti-mobility parks, such as anti-tank barriers, barbed wire and concrete blocks, which are designed to slow down potential invaders. Latvia, like the other two Baltic states, and Finland have also installed fences on their borders with Russia and Belarus. According to the agency, these works are a clear sign that security in NATO's frontline states is now determined by Russia's war in Ukraine. Last summer, Russian troops prevented a counter-offensive by Kyiv and regained the initiative on the battlefield. The leaders of the Baltic states, who saw a Russian defeat in Ukraine as the best way to guarantee their security, now see the tide of war turning in Moscow's direction. Recent months have brought a flurry of warnings about a possible Russian attack on NATO within the next decade. Not only have Vilnius, Riga and Tallinn sounded the alarm, but also ministers in Stockholm, Berlin and London have predicted a possible confrontation within two to eight years. Regional leaders see the three Baltic states with their small territories and narrow land links to the rest of NATO as a place where a bolder Putin might try to test the alliance's unity and resolve through destabilizing provocations or even a direct military attack. These fears are exacerbated by the prospect of Donald Trump returning to the White House after the November presidential election, which will raise serious doubts about the US commitment to European security at a time when few officials or analysts believe in Europe's ability to defend itself. Strikes to Russian military airfield in Crimea caused serious problems in supply of Russians. On the night of the 17th of April, explosions occurred in the town of Zankoy near the military airfield. According to local residents, the explosions occurred before the air raid alert was announced. Footage widely circulated on social media by Russian and Ukrainian sources show bright flashes of light and explosions with sirens wailing in the background. A local telegram channel reported several loud explosions before a fire broke out. Roads around the airbase are blocked, the channel later reported. Zankoy is a major military hub, home to one of Russia's largest airfields in Crimea. It is a key location for supplying Russian troops up through Moscow-controlled southern Ukraine and the front lines of fighting on the mainland. Russia annexed Crimea back in 2014. Open source intelligence accounts said that Russian forces used the airfield as a base for attack helicopters and anti-aircraft missile systems. Several reports suggest Ukrainian forces may have struck the facility, but Kyiv has not commented. Russian airbases in Crimea have been targeted by Kyiv in the more than two years of all-out war. Earlier this year, Ukraine's Air Force said it had launched missile strikes on the Belbek airfield close to the port city of Sevastopol on Crimea's western edge. Ukrainian military analyst Sergei Grabsky analyzed what the occupiers could have lost in Zankoy military airfield. Mainly helicopters are based at the airfield, but it is worth understanding that the airfield is not only a parking lot for aircraft, it is also a warehouse with supplies. Therefore, a series of explosions that began there even before the announcement of the air raid warning may mean that this strike was applied very accurately, the expert commented. He also noted that any attacks on Russian aviation pose a serious threat to the Russian Federation. If the Russian Federation is doing well with the land component at the moment, then restoring the Air Force component is something they have problems with. It is much more difficult to restore aviation equipment. Therefore, the destruction of any element of this type of weapon means large losses for the enemy, Grabsky explained. In addition, the expert confirmed the recent words of Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky that now the ratio of Ukrainian to Russian aviation can be considered as 1 to 30. The Russians have concentrated 300 planes and 290 helicopters on all fronts of this war, but the Russian Federation cannot increase its air component. And, relying on the help of Western allies, we can achieve parity, the expert noted.